Let's start with Coach Levy, uh, just in general. Jeff, kind of take us through the off season, which doesn't really even exist anymore, right? And kind of how you feel like this team has grown from year one to year two. Yeah, you know, I think our guys have uh, done, done a ton to put themselves in a really good spot going into camp next Thursday. Um, we've got a group right now that it is, is hungry to get on the field, is eager to get on the field. They've done an unbelievable job in the meeting room. They've done an unbelievable job with Smitty. And we've got a committed group right now. I think the most impressive thing to me that stands out, you know, we got through with exit meetings with Coach Smitty talking about the summer and the issues that we had throughout the summer compared to last year are night and day. And to me, it just shows our guys understand what accountability means. They understand what the standard is. They understand what toughness and being accountable and dependable every single day looks like. And we're in a much different spot today than we were a year ago. And so that's been great to see guys have put a lot of time in, a lot of effort in, and, uh, and we're ready to get going next Thursday. Coach Levy, I want to uh, follow that up by just asking you about your quarterback dynamic going into this year. Obviously, I, I, I assume Dylan Gabriel is the guy, but you got this hot shot, Jackson Arnold, that everybody can't wait to see as well. So what's the dynamic there in that room? Yeah, well, Dylan, again, has done the things that he's needed to do to put himself in a spot to go have a great year, and we're, we're expecting that. Uh, he needs to go play his butt off. He's got to play better than he's got to, than he did a year ago, and I need to call it better than I did a year ago. And, and the supporting cast, uh, everybody involved will be better, and that's that's the expectation, and we all know that. Um, you know, you hear Coach V always talk about competitive depth, and competitive depth on our roster right now. Again, we're in a much different place today than we were a year ago, and that is also at the QB position. So signing Jackson, this is a dude that's come in. He's made 24 hours at A already. So incredibly proud of him, and all he's done is taken care of his business, and and really he's exceeded expectations. You know, you recruit a kid, kid for so long, but you don't know what they're going to be like in the meeting room every single day. You don't know what they're going to be like with Schmitty when it gets really, really hard. You know, and it's it's two o'clock in a in a hot afternoon in the summer. So proud of where he's at. Uh, he's done a great job. Again, we've talked about this a ton, but at some point that young man is going to be the face of our program and everybody in this room and. And Sooner Nation is going to be dang proud of him. Coach Ruth, uh, so many times it was talked about the defense understanding their responsibilities and knowing what Coach Venable's defense is all about. How have you seen that impacted from year one to year two, where it went from learning to now the returners knowing and also teaching as well, right? Yeah, it, uh, first of all, it starts with a mindset, uh, an attack mindset and then a dominating mindset. And the growth that has occurred it's been consistent, it's been incremental, and if you stack a bunch of days of incremental growth on top of one another, you look back over a period of time and there's huge leaps. And we know we need to make huge leaps, but we have. And uh, I'm excited about moving forward, what's gonna run out on the field for us. And, uh, you know, you asked about the quarterback dynamic, you didn't ask about the nose guard dynamic. <laughs> we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Okay. Tell us about the nose guard dynamic, Coach <laughs> Well, that's that that's a big big time deal for us as well. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. you know we're we're only going to be as good as we are up front. And if you get knocked back and you play on the other side of the line of scrimmage, good things are going to happen for you. And um, like like Coach Levy mentioned, as far as competitive depth, you know we had some situations last year where we had guys playing a hundred snaps in a ball game, consistent in consecutive weeks. And you know when you need to get a stop in the fourth quarter and all that. It all it all adds up, and uh, you know I got to do a better job, and uh, you know it's been my experience that when you win when you one possession games, you're going to have a great year. When you lose your one possession games, it's going to be a disappointing year, no matter what your goals and aspirations are. So, uh, but we're in a much better place from a leadership standpoint, uh, competitive depth, and, and like you asked about the general understanding of what's expected. And, and again, before we get a question, to Coach Beatonbo, you joke about the defensive tackle nose guard position, but there's a lot of new faces that have come in there, uh, but also some familiar ones, right? Some guys that were here last year, freshmen like Grayson Holt, that you want to see make a difference. Um, but just can you, I mean, you're a kid. There's a lot of new faces there. How different is that room right now? It, it's a lot different. Um, you know, when the whole landscape of college football with the transfer portal has changed it, and 
you know, we, we hit we hit some home runs on some guys, not just as football players, but also the type of people that you insert in those rooms because that's critical too, because if you insert the wrong type of people in those rooms, it can make the room crumble from inside out. But the guys that we the guys that chose to come here and be a part of this um, have added value to it and not a, in a way that not only by themselves, but they're making the people around them better. Because again, competitive depth and competition, and competition makes everybody better. How many uh, ladies here were at the ladies' clinic last Saturday? Any? Oh, yeah, I see some hands, a few of you. I think maybe my favorite thing there, it was a great day, my favorite thing might have been watching Coach Beatenbow coach 500 ladies how to properly block the zone read. <laughs> It was fantastic. How do you think I did? You did fantastic. In I don't film. know if they understood anything I said. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, uh, how much were you encouraged by what you saw in the uh, Florida State game, the Cheez It Bowl, at the end of the year? Some of the guys you're going to have to lean on more this season. Yeah, I, I thought they did a really good job. I mean, we really we had four uh, new starters, guys that hadn't really started much, and then we moved McKay to right guard and. Um, you know, it was supposedly a top 10 defense, you know, in the country. And I can't remember the, you know, we got sacked too many times, but I can't remember the amount of rushing yards. But both guys, two uh, uh, true freshmen had, uh, I think, 125 each, something like that. So uh, when you can run the ball like that, you have a chance. We, we need to protect better. But um, I, I was encouraged. They, they did a good job. And, and heck, I was going to have to play if one more guy went down. I mean, it was, we weren't in a good situation. but. They went out there, they battled, they fought and, and against a good defense. So I think it gave some guys some confidence, you know, going into the spring. Um, so it, it was good, good starting point. What does Walter Rouse bring? What's that? Walter Rouse, the transfer from Stanford, left tackle. We didn't get a chance to see him in the spring, but what can he bring to this offensive line? Yeah, re really mature. Started 39 games at Stanford. He did have uh, shoulder surgery in December. Um, he's back healthy now. We're going to take it um, slow, you know, show, you know, with an offensive lineman, you're always engaging your shoulders in every single block. Um, so we're going to take it a little bit slow, but got a mature kid, a lead. He's already stepped into a leadership role, um, extremely smart, inquisitive, um, big, massive dude that's actually a lot more athletic than I anticipated just seeing him, you know, on tape at Stanford. So. Um, really, really excited about him. Obviously, experience. You know, you can't you can't substitute experience really at any position, but especially on the offensive line. So, um, fired up to get out there, and, and I actually recruited Walter out of high school. You know, and um, but ended up going to Stanford. He was like a biomedical engineering major out there. So, um, which I don't even know what that is. But uh, <laughs> anyway, he's a he's a really smart kid, and, and fired up about him. Coach Pinkwell, there's a lot of former, a lot of former OU tackles that are making big money in the NFL right now. That's been a great position around here. You got to replace both of them, at least in the starting lineup. Walter might be one of them. Tyler Guyton, we did see last year, but is expected to maybe be the other starter this year. Well, what's his potential? Tyler's? Yes. Yeah, unlimited. You know, he's only. He's only played offensive line. I think this will truly be his third year. You know, he um, he played basketball in high school, was a DN his senior year. Um, you know, went to another school for a couple years and actually played tight end there, caught a touchdown pass. So um, this is really only truly his third year of off of playing offensive line. One of the, and we've been very fortunate here, um, and, and even before I was here, but in the time that I've been here to have some really, really talented guys, um, guys that are committed, guys that uh, want to get to that elite level, and um, Tyler can do it. You know, he's only started, I want to say, four or five games in his career, but, um, you know, he's 6'7", he's right at 6'7", he was just 327 pounds, and he literally looks like he's 209. I've never seen anything like it, and can move. He, he could play tight end, he really could. He could play D-line, I mean, it's, He's got unlimited potential, but you got to go do it. Had a really good spring, um, but fired up about coaching him, and he's really matured and, and gotten more committed all in to what he has to do to be an elite player. All right, we're getting ready for you guys' questions. We're going to go around with the coaches one more time, so make sure you have your questions ready. Coach Levy, I'm curious. There's always that 
debate about can you carry momentum over from a bowl game. But at the very least, we saw two running backs, and Gavin Sawchuk and Devontae, and Devontae Barnes, really take advantage of that. Seems like you got a deep running back room with a lot of unknown and new names. How are you feeling overall about the way that that momentum is carried over in that room in general? Yeah, you know, Bill just talked about it, but the experience part of it, man, you got to live it. You know, and so those guys being able to play at a high level in that game uh, was critical and was huge. Those guys are incredibly mature, and they've got great toughness about them. Marco's done an unbelievable job creating growth with those guys in a hurry. Uh, but two guys that we, we expect to go play their butt off, and we expect a lot from, and, and guys that understand what leadership's about, too, at, at a young age. And uh, guys that, again, that we're, we're really excited about setting the tone for that room. Obviously, with Marcus in there, you know, want him to get healthy when he's been on the field. He's had a lot of production. He's played at a high level. So getting him healthy, keeping him healthy uh, will be exciting as well with a couple of these other young guys. Coach Roof, is there a guy or two on your side of the ball who maybe they were a bit player uh, last year who you think have a chance to explode onto the scene and be a big time player for you this year? Um, I think that uh, you know Billy Bowman will have a chance to really uh, have a great year for us. He's a guy that's got a lot of experience and. He got hurt last year, so that, that slowed down his development. And we missed him when he got hurt, but that's you know that's where that competitive depth comes into play. So I'm excited about him and a, a guy that people have talked about. He was a leading, he was a leading tackler in the Big 12. But uh, Danny Stutzman, as far as from a, a leadership perspective, he was a guy that was you know trying to figure out his own job last year and ran around and made plays. And now he's kind of taken stranglehold, put a stranglehold on our guys and, and got them together. And uh, when things go bad, he's a guy that now jumps in and gets them going and, and pulls people with him. And uh, so I, even though those guys played a lot for us, uh, really excited about them. And then Jonah Alulu, uh, he went from a 260-pound defensive end to a 300-pound defensive tackle, which makes us more athletic on the inside. And again, from a leadership position, uh, he's done a fantastic job for us this summer. And both of those guys you mentioned represented OU at Big 12 Media Days, which is an honor because you're out spreading the word of the program. But I, I want to talk about Danny. What a personality. Unique hair, unique approach. Uh, I don't know, you're shaking your head already. But how much of that do you want? You don't want to rein any of it in, but you want it to be him, but in the same vein. Was it a learning process to understand, all right, this is the discipline, this is what's needed to play in this defense? I just want guys to be themselves, whoever they are, be authentic, be genuine, and at the same time, play within the framework of the defense, give us the best version of yourself, and you know what? Uh, we're all made different, and it takes all types of people to make up a team. But what he has a unique ability to do is he relates to all types of people. Uh, and uh, as a result of that, he's a guy that our people have just grabbed onto. I'm gonna ask uh, each of, Chris is gonna go down, raise your hand if you've got a question, he'll, he'll find you. Um, Coach Beatmo, we'll start with you. Same question for all three of you. Year two, and with the SEC right around the corner, what are you seeing out there in recruiting as far as the appeal, whether it's to Brent Venables and the new regime here, whether it's to the SEC? What, I know you can't name names, but what's the reception out on the recruiting trail for Oklahoma like right now? I think, I think it's good, and, and, and first of all, this is Oklahoma. Okay, and, and that, that's what I tell these guys. You know, th this is one of the most historic programs, no matter what conference they're in, and we are going in or going into, all right? This is Oklahoma, and this is a special place with special people. And has the recruiting gotten better? Yeah, because a lot of kids want to play in the SEC. That's just, that's reality, and, and it's going to happen, you know, here, here in a year uh, after this year. But... Obviously, we got one more year in the Big 12, and you know I'll, you're always looking to the future and preparing for the future. But you know, really, my focus is winning right now and this year, quite honestly. So, yeah, we're recruiting for 24 and 25 and 26 and all those things, but um, I want to win now. I want to win a championship this year, you know. So, um, but it, it has for me personally, it has gotten. I don't know if easier is the right word, but you get more perception. Um, and, and I, you always have, but a lot of kids want to play in the SEC. 
What about defensive side of the ball, Coach? Same question. Well, uh, you know, there is only one Oklahoma. There was a video made by a couple famous coaches uh, about that. And all you got to do is pull up to our stadium. There's no other stadium in the country that can put 50 conference championships up there on the side of the stadium. So there is only one Oklahoma. So with that being said, you know, we've got unfinished business this year in the Big 12, and we've got to take care of that. And by being successful this year, right, it'll help us down the road. But um, certainly looking forward to that, but at the same time, uh, being right where our feet are and uh, understanding that we got to take care of business this year. But yeah, it's an exciting time. Kids have been very receptive. Um, so, yeah. Jeff, how would you answer that? You know, it's similar. I think the biggest thing Bill said it, Coach Root just said it, but again, we're, we are. We're Oklahoma. We got a lot to sell. We've always had a lot to sell. That's not going to change. Uh, being in the SEC here after this next season is, it is a big deal and it is important, but uh, both coaches just hit on it. We, we're worried about taking care of today while playing for the mall all at the same time, but taking care of business this fall, which uh, we dang sure intend to, that's going to help us in recruiting as well. All right, Chris is in the crowd. He's got a question right over here. And, and by the way, this is a reminder, the coaches can't talk about individual recruits. So if it's a recruiting question, we can't talk about guys that have either committed or have been signed because we don't want to risk that. Steve, go ahead, bud. Uh, for Coach Levy, do you have any young receivers you expect to make an impact this year? Yeah, we, we got a few of them. I think when you look at the receiver room, it's, it's a little bit similar to last year. We've got a lot of guys that are very capable. We've got a lot of guys that don't have any production. Uh, so fall camp's going to be huge for us. You know, these next 20 practices before we tee it up for real, um, that Saturday morning at 11 are going to be huge. And their growth and their development over the last six months has been huge. So uh, there's a bunch of guys that fall into that category. I think a guy that we saw last fall just a little bit of that uh, has had this incredible spring in this offseason and summer is a young man, Gavin Freeman, who is all he's done is continue to shine. He's taken every single opportunity he's gotten, and he's ran with it. So. Excited about where he's at and what he's going to do. You're absolutely going to see him. And then from an outside receiver standpoint, whether it's Nick Anderson or Andrew Anthony or Jaden Gibson or Brennan Thompson, you know, these guys got to have a great fall camp to create trust throughout the unit and with myself and the staff. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to that. But we got guys that are capable, but we got to go make plays and go do it. All right, Kit's got one for you guys. Hey, uh, Coach Roof, I wanted to ask specifically about a player and then in general. You know, you hear this, the kid's a five-star, the kid's a two-star, or a three-star. Well, Samaja Piram is a three-star recruit who came in, and all he, all he was was incredible. So what do you think is the difference between development and actually finding the talent, how that works? And then the, uh, well, the I young couldn't man, hear you. What would you say? What's the difference between finding the, the great talent and then developing? You know, the difference between, like, for instance, we bring guys in that are rated three-stars, and they end up being NFL draft prospects. Okay, uh, was the evaluation poor on the front end, or was it uh, uh, that you, you did a fantastic job of development? And I want to hear about the uh, uh, the linebacker who transferred from the lower division school. I heard I heard people kind of denigrating him on the radio because he played at a smaller school, and I just they were what they said less than positive things. You're listening about. to the wrong station. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Connor Near, I think yes. you were talking. That's about. correct. Yeah. yeah. That's it, Coach. Well, um, just like any business, football is no different. The acquisition of talent and the development of talent are critical factors to success. And part of the identification of talent, uh, which is the hard piece of it, because you can see measurables, you can see physical performance, and there's certain characteristics that we all look for in our position. But what's under your third rib, call it your heart, that's the toughest thing to evaluate. And guys that can, can evaluate that and project that, because you very rarely lose with a football team that's full of heart that's got talent as well. So the development piece, the identification piece, the acquisition piece, they're all critical. But to get guys, regardless of, of what the values and beliefs and fundamentals of your program are, to get guys that fit your, your program guys that fit in your culture. That's to building a, a, a championship football team. That's absolutely critical. And to your other question about uh, Connor Neer, um, 
He's a guy that was a two-time All-American, two-time captain, yes, at a lower division school, but a guy that has a chip on his shoulder that wants to prove that he can play at a place like Oklahoma. And he brings a sense of confidence, a sense of maturity, some experience. And when he walked in the room, you know, those other guys, their eyebrows kind of went up like, okay, okay. And he's been, his attitude and his, his blending with the team has been fantastic. But he's a guy that has also made the people around him better. And uh, I have a real respect for him. Coach Levy, are we going to score against Texas this year? Wow. I, I, I would like to say that if we don't, I probably won't be sitting here next year. <laughs> so, hell, I hope so. That was a fastball. Holy cow. He's not, he's not even blinking either. He's like, hey, yeah, I asked that. We had a church. Isn't this a church? This is a church. Yeah. Also. All right, over there. We got a little man here. Will be the toughest opponent uh, this year. That guy right there. <laughs> uh, Coach Petenbo, why don't you start? Toughest opponent this year. Oh, God, that's a great question. And you know, they're all tough. They really are. Um, everybody's got good players. Everybody, you know, these guys are on scholarship. And if you're not, and you just see it in college football right now. I mean, if you're not prepared going to get beat, you know, and with the transfer period, you know, guys, you, you can get better, faster these days than you probably ever could in the past, so I'm not going to say anything, I, I think they're all tough. That's the correct answer, they are all tough. Uh, one more uh, question for each of you, and Coach Pete we'll start with you. Year two for Brent Venables, what has impressed you about Coach V? You know, the sole mission, Caleb is here today, and him going forward. After a year of, of coaching with him, tell us your impression of Coach Venables. Yeah, the first thing I'll say, I, I really believe he's a great man, and I think that's where it starts. You know, he, he cares about the players like probably no other coach that I've, I've been around. And, and every coach cares about them, but there, there's levels to everything. And I think that's, and the coaches, and the families, and yeah. You know, that, that's really important. Um, I've said this before, coaching, and I love coaching. I couldn't do anything else, but it is a grind, and you're away from your family a lot. So you have to have that family atmosphere within the, within the building, and our families are always welcome. And, and, and the biggest thing with me is he, he doesn't waver. You know, um, you know, we lost four games by three points. We lost a game by seven points. And, um, you know, it was tough. It, it was, you know, it, None of us here at Oklahoma have been used to it, you know, and it was hard, but he just stuck to He just sticks to his plan. He's got a plan. He's got a vision, and, and he preaches that every day, and you can ask our players about it, ask us about it. Everybody's on board. So, um, you know, and obviously it's passion. Everybody sees that. You know, he's obviously a great, great coach. You know, you, you see his history and national championships he's been in. He knows how to get there, and we're going to get there. Um, no, nobody wanted what happened last year to happen, but it did, and we're going to learn from it, and we're going to be better because of it. Mm -hmm. Coach Levy, it was widely reported that uh, you know some other high-profile schools took a run at you this offseason to come work for them. Why did you stay? Why did you stay with Brent? You know, I, I think more than anything is because it's just like we talked about with recruiting, we're at Oklahoma. You know, you don't leave Oklahoma, and uh, I, I understand the. Uh, uh, what comes with that, and I also understand that, man, Coach B always talks about, he's, he set really such a great example for for coordinators at elite places, and uh, by him staying at Clemson for 10 years and being incredibly patient, and he says it all the time, man, don't mess up happy, you know, and uh, I'm incredibly blessed, I'm in an unbelievable situation, my wife and two kids absolutely love it here, not to mention I am at my alma mater, uh, and, and have talked a lot about this. We're going to make this thing right. So uh, it's going to get right in a hurry. I got a ton of trust in Coach V. We've got an unbelievable staff, and we got guys in our locker room that are committed to being great and, and chasing championships, and we're going to go do it. So all those reasons. Jeff Levy, Ted Roof, Bill Beatonbow, thanks for taking some time out of your day, coaches, and good luck this season. Thanks for being with us. <laughs>